All right, guys, so we're going to remove this M50 intake manifold, and at the same time, we're going to pull the injector, try to pull the injector rail out with it. We might have to separate them in the car. I don't remember on E36 how it was. Um, so we're going to start off basically, we already have the throttle body off, and on this is just four bolts that bolts the throttle body to the car, right? Let me make sure you can see that. You can kind of see that. Let's shift it around just a little bit here. There you go. And then what we're going to do after that, we are going to pull the cowling out up here. And then we're going to go ahead and do the one bolt holding the dipstick in, pull this hose off, and we're going to pull the dipstick totally out of the car. So at that point in time, we'll peel the throttle body back up here out of the way, disconnect it, and we should be able to get to the bolts holding the intake brackets to the engine block, and then go ahead and pull all these lines off hopefully we don't break anything and let me put you on time lapse so we're going to get to it all right so for putting on time lapse we're going to go ahead and take a seven millimeter socket we're going to pull this bolt right here out these are a little impact and we have another bolt up here all these are kind of hard to get to. We might have to pull this wiring out of the car, but let's just see. All right, and memory serves me, there was other bolts in the bottom. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pull all this stuff off like that, kind of set it out of the way as we go here. And ooh, there's a big mouse nest in there too. So yeah, what was the deal with this? There's screws on top that hold that guy in there. So let me grab this and we're gonna go ahead and separate it. It's been about a, almost two years since I've done this. We have a Phillips screw right there. And we have another one right there. I'll go ahead and pull those out of the way so they don't fall down in the engine. And now we're separated our harness from the holder. And somewhere down here there should be two more screws I guess there's not I think I'm almost sure that on the newer cars there is on the 96 and up but this one might be one on this side yeah there's one on this side but not on that side let's go ahead and pull it up and out like that right there yeah correct me if I'm wrong guys I'm almost sure that the 96 and up has another screw right there but on this one only three screws on OBD1 cars that exposes everything back here that exposes our mouse nest and the whole works and then that should give us enough leeway to go ahead and pull this manifold totally off and a little tip or trick here on these older cars take a little pp blaster wd-40 and go ahead and spray all the hose clamps and that'll save you a lot of grief in uh, disassembling this thing they're going to be hard to turn if you don't the chance of you breaking those getting them off is very good and some extra hose clamps laying around definitely is not a bad thing okay so here's where we're at we're removing the throttle body and i want to show you guys exactly what to do here uh, there's two hoses on the bottom. We just snipped them off because they're all dry and hard. We can't reuse them anyway. And this car is not getting put together. It's a parts car. So how you take this off, 
We have one taken off already. It has little plastic threads back here. And you just grab it and you're gonna wanna thread those in to give it more slack. At that point in time, you can squeeze the clips on the back and you're gonna push this piece of plastic out of here. Just like that. Once you do that, then you can just slip it out of the holder and then it's off like that. Now what we're gonna have to do next is pull these cables off the back and there's two different ways you could do it. There's either a uh, little bolts right here you can pull off or you could actually just slip them out of the holders back here. Okay, so in this case, we're going to take a 10 millimeter and we're gonna, on the bottom, break that bracket loose. We already broke this one loose. There is a rubber hose on the bottom. We're just gonna remove that really quick, maybe. I have to wait till I actually get the bracket off of it. So let's go ahead and break the other side loose. There we go. Let me go and pause this so the video is not three hours long. All right, so we're back here, and all we've done is taken two bolts out of the bottom bracket and popped it off. And you can see the third hose right there we just popped off. There's no clamp on it. You can see the two holes that hold the throttle cable bracket in. And those are 10 millimeters. So now your throttle body is completely off. And I guess this will be for sale too. All this stuff's gonna be for sale. Um, if you guys are interested in this stuff, the intake, the valve cover, the metal valve cover, and the throttle body and probably engine ECU and all that stuff. If nothing's chewed into the wiring harness, nothing's cut, we'll be selling that too uh, for the engine. But yeah, uh, there'll be, well, I can't put a link to it because there's nothing to link to. Uh, probably just get a hold of me on Facebook, uh, PM me on Facebook on Nathan's DIY Garage. And then of course what that exposed was you could actually get to the bolt to this bracket down here. And then there's another bolt, cooling all over me. Another bolt right there you have to take out. And that's the two main support brackets for this thing. There's a bunch of hoses, and next we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go ahead and pull out, if you can even see it, all the bolts up here. It's got all kinds of stuff down in there. You can see them up here. We'll pull all that out and disconnect the fuel rail and all that stuff next. All right, so we got the fuel rail out. These older cars, they get pretty crispy. And uh, the how it's set up, the wiring harness just snaps off the injectors, has little clips. Usually they snap off pretty easy. This one's been there so damn long. But you gotta be careful. You can't just go hogging on it real hard or you just gotta bust everything off. So we got everything off. Has some old stinky gas in it. All the injector nozzles are all good. Uh, usually the injectors are okay. This car hasn't been sitting that long. We, well, it's been sitting probably, uh, probably six months since I put fresh fuel on it and try to start it. So, uh, went in and just snipped the hoses off. Usually you take the clamps off. There's one on the front, one on the back. One on the back, one on the front, it's flipped around. There's also a smaller vacuum line. This one was just totally rotten, totally gone. There's a spider too. Um, and you go ahead and take that off and here's your pressure regulator there's your injector rail and that is done now for our swap we're going to need this we don't necessarily have to have the injectors themselves but maybe some people might want those i think it's the same harness and it looks like it as on the newer cars so now the next step is to pull the intake bolts off and pull these brackets off now to do the intake nuts i should say you're going to need a magnet like this this is just a extendable small magnet and we're going to be using our impact with your swivel joint on the end and extension and before you start this it's not such a big deal on this car because it's all coming apart anyway you definitely want to get a vacuum cleaner and vacuum out any dirt or debris that's in there we took a little air compressor and blew out most of it and uh we're going to go ahead and just disassemble this let's 
this one may not reach. Might have to grab a, a deep well 11. These are all 11 millimeter. Let me grab that real quick. All right, so in this case, I don't have a deep well 11 and 3 8 drive. We had to use a 7 16 We're gonna go ahead and zip this stuff off of here. Before we go any further, let's take our magnet. We're gonna reach that in there. We're just gonna pull the nuts out of here. Now M52, there's openings so the nuts could fall down. In that case, you gotta put the magnet next to the nut when you zip it off so it don't fall down and you don't lose it. If you have extra laying around, it's not really that big of a deal. But if you don't, it could be quite the problem. Let me go ahead and zip the rest of these out. Let's set these down somewhere. And the very back one is going to be pretty difficult to get to. And that one fell down, which in our case, like I said, we have buckets and buckets and buckets of that stuff. Ordinarily, you'd have to put the magnet down by it and pull it out. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Now, all the bolts are out on the top. Before we could pull it off, we got to remove the brackets on the bottom. Right, so heavy zoomed in here. We changed to a 13 millimeter to take these brackets off on the bottom. And that will just rip them right out. You know, a lot of people don't like using these things. These bigger impacts but it's definitely a time saver like you've never seen before especially for dismantling i don't use them a lot on reassemble but on dismantle it's definitely a lifesaver all right we barely use this one a little bit tough we're gonna have to get that back at a better angle Be able to pull it off. I'm just gonna push some of that stuff off to the side. Let me grab that socket with the little magnet. All right, so we got the two 13 millimeter bolts out, and that loosened it up. We have two fuel lines right here. Uh, you can undo the clamps. In our case, we just cut them. The hoses are rock hard, so you can't use them anyway. Next off, we're gonna pull that hose off just like that and then we're going to have to go over to this dipstick this dipstick has a 13 it's way down in there let me go and push all this junk over to the side out of the way and we're going to go down and remove the 13 and pull the dipstick out of the uh, oil pan all right so we're back the camera went dead you can tell when it starts down a staticky it's about to go dead flipped up and it was just off so that's nice so hopefully we're starting in the right spot. We took our dipstick 10 millimeter bolt out. That's free. That should be, I think it's really over full of oil too. That should be out of the way enough. Let's hit that guy right there. Now we can pull it out. We're just gonna lift it up off of there first. All right. And might have to pull those brackets off. Let's see if we can do it with it still on there. Looks like we can. And then we're going to have to I'm just looking down in the down in the deal there. Um, we're going to have to get this thing flipped over and pull that off there. Let me look down in here and see what else. Make sure all that crap's off of there. It is. All right, there we go, and that's all disconnected. All of our brackets are all caught up in our wiring and hoses. All right, there's a plug right here on the back, squeeze plug. Take that off, and that was pretty much it, huh? All right, so there it is. Let me set it over here. And then there is a little bit of trash down the engine. A couple little pieces of grass, nothing too major. Uh, we don't know if this head's gonna be good. If the head is good, it's gonna be for sale. 
Since the electrode fell down in there, we got to make sure the head's not all beat up. It may not be at all, or it might be totally ruined. There's no way to tell. So there it is. The intake manifold is off. So really not too hard of a job. I would say, uh, I don't know, a three or four out of 10 for beginners. Might be pretty difficult to get it done. Um, but a little time and the right tools, it'll come right off. You can see we have our cold start. Uh, that thing just pulled out of there, no problem. You probably should reach around there and push it out. Uh, actually, I think this was pushed out. I think I pushed it out when I had the throttle body off. And our cold start valve is right here, or our ICV, you might say. Uh, so uh, then it allows, allows you access to your starter at this point in time. And E36, all the M50, M52 engines are really bad about blowing this hose on the back. And it's kind of expanded out a little bit and it looks pretty good that goes over to the heater valve on m52 that hose goes in the back of the head all the way over here it's real long that loves to blow out if that blows out on the highway you're pretty much done i just want to show you if you can see it or not look how expanded probably can't tell on camera how expanded that top radiator hose is so that was getting ready to blow out for sure so tomorrow i think what we're going to do since this car is here and we have to do the work anyway we're going to go ahead and pull the fan and everything off the front and we're going to pull the valve cover off and we'll probably do a timing video tomorrow if the weather permits tomorrow and once to do the timing video where the valve covers off we'll probably go ahead and make a cylinder head removal actual removal uh, how to get the as all awesome manifolds off and how to lift the head out of the car. So yeah, if any of you guys need parts off this thing, let me know. I don't know what price is yet. I haven't looked anything up. That's all for today's video. Appreciate all you guys watching. If you can, do me a huge favor. Go hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment. That really helps the calls out a lot. And that's it. Thanks for watching.